So hi everybody, this is Keith Jones with Total Seal Piston Rings and I've got something really special here for you, I've got a treat. This is the doctor, Mark Malberg, the man who put digital into metrology. This is, I'm going on and on, this is the surface finish guru. Uh, I gotta tell you folks, when I started doing and messing around with this stuff in the late 90s, uh, we had some very basic rudimentary equipment and I'm looking at you know RA finishes and going to different people's shops and, and working on cylinder bores and why do I have an RA of an 18 here and I've got an RA of an 18 here mm -hmm. and these are completely different looking cylinders just with my eyes. This is a completely different thing happening here but yet it measures the same. And then I stumbled on to this little tidbit of information on the internet you know written by this gentleman here about digital metrology and I started reading about 3D surfaces and you know RQs and R, you know PKs and R, and I go wow had my Homer Simpson moment oh, you know that's not what I need to know I need to know this so you're the reason that we've gone down this rabbit hole you started it and 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 we'll say my cohort in crime Lake Speeds dove into it you know one into the other and and we're just you know we really enjoy bringing this information out and looking at you know tribology and the effect of sliding surfaces and fluids within those sliding surfaces and and I just want to thank you Mark here he is out in Arizona enjoying the monsoon weather perfect time of the year but no this is super cool thanks for the opportunity I've um, seen some great things today so far and I just love hanging out with you it's great uh, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, I gave Mark the tour and hopefully he wasn't too disappointed. No, it was fantastic. So, Mark, what, you know, here we are, we, you know, we're working at the numbers, we're looking at what we have today. Mm -hmm. If, In your opinion, what what aren't we looking at? Where do mm -hmm. we need to go next? What, you know, what's the next level of what we're doing here and, and where do we want to go? Sure. Um, I always, always am amazed when I see people say we're, we're looking at the numbers. Dirty little secret, I don't look at numbers that much. I, I analyze surfaces kind of for a living. I was gonna say, this is what you do. what I do, I, I get to do this, it's so cool. Um, I look at pictures. We don't often tap into the other side of our brain when we start thinking technology and you know process improvement and performance. We, we want to get to numbers. What's that RA, what's that RK? Um, when's the last time you've come home from a concert and said it was 105 decibels? Well, I'm going to throw you into a little secret, okay? All right, all Just right. so you know, I've got tinnitus, or what's known as tinnitus, so sure. I actually do monitor it. I've got a DV meter on my phone. <laughs> I'll go ahead and edit this out of the video right now. Yeah. The podcast doesn't need to hear that. But my point is, the numbers don't describe an experience, right? You know, 120 decibels could have been a really loud symphony or a fire truck or a chainsaw. Um, or my ears are or your ears are still bleeding, <laughs> or bleeding, bleeding at that point, right? Um, so numbers really aren't descriptive of an experience. Mm -hmm. And to me, a surface is really something to think about an experience. How do you see the peaks versus the valleys? How would a piston ring see the peaks versus the valleys? And it's really hard for our numbers to even represent that well. Um, you mentioned surfaces that perform differently that have the same RA value. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, a, a piece of sandpaper could have an RA value, or a milled engine head deck could have the same RA value. Totally different look and feel. Similar roughnesses. Again, chainsaw versus the symphony. Yeah. Same sound. Low. Both, both yeah. 120 dB. Well, well, two yeah, very different things. <laughs> yeah, maybe in the 90s, hopefully, yeah. it's a little more bearable. Um, so, yeah, I, I would always encourage people to get to the next level of understanding of surfaces, whether it's roughness, waviness, roundness is important. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. talked about that recently. Yes. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. Um, I'm super pumped when I see you and Lake, you know, hold up your SJ210 and say, you know, here's the profile graph. Yeah. That's where we start to understand how the material moved around and how something's going to interact with it. If you show me the screen with the numbers, and people do this, and to you that do this, stop it. <laughs> and they say, here's our data, and they give me a column of RA values or a column of RK values. I can't tell you what that surface is going to do. The numbers really don't mean that much. Okay. They're a way of saying, is the picture generally right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way to guide, we'll say, lead that horse to the water, but Absolutely. how good's the water? Right, right. So many times we'll have cases, even within you know production, where performance varies, but the process is still in control. Okay. And that's because we're controlling a process to numbers. And granted, our numbers are getting better, 
but pictures are where we can make real improvements. Quick story, I had one customer company, big company, um, did some training for them and they bought some software where they could analyze their surfaces back in their office. So make the measurements on the shop floor in the lab, all the raw profile graph data ends up on a server in their office. Left them and didn't hear much from them. A year later I got an email and said, hey Mark, and that's the best way to open a sentence, hey Mark, so <laughs> keep them coming. Um, and they said, we never understood our surfaces until we started playing with our data. Okay. I've latched on to that. Play with your data. Take that surface graphs, blow it up, zoom in on it, refilter it, level it, flatten it. Play with your data. And it's amazing when you start thinking like a craftsman instead of an accountant, how much more you'll learn. Certainly. Certainly. We've got to look at those numbers. So we need to take that data, put it into the software, mm -hmm. and then expand it, look at it. Look at our material ratios above, below. Right. Do, do you want to explain a little bit of that to the, to the people that haven't been looking at those numbers? Yeah, well, so let's start with just looking at a graph, okay? Yeah, sure. So um, let's see how our markers are doing here. Um, we'll see a profile graph that might look like this for this gloriously beautiful plateaued section of a surface. So the first thing when we look at this is to think about our scale. Now, this blows most people away. This scale on this axis is usually micro inches mm -hmm. and on this scale it's inches okay so already we've expanded this a whole bunch and people uh, one of my favorite engineers once did a hey mark and again hey mark is what I, I respond to <laughs> he said hey mark how did you get your diamond stylus into those little slits on this surface because they look really steep on our graphs right? oh yeah how do you get your diamond into those little slits and I you know, went back to him, I was a snarky young engineer, I said, how did you make slits? Think about it, you know, honing is a bunch of rocks that are being dragged over your surface. Those rocks aren't razor blades. No. This surface that we're making doesn't look like this in reality. No. In reality, this surface looks like the bottoms of those rocks. These valleys are really much wider than they are deep. Okay. So if you look at a scanning electron microscope photo of the surface, valleys are wide. They're not razor thin slits. No. First thing to think about then is as you start exploring your data, is the graph real? No. We're dragging rocks over a surface. It's cool though, we had this conversation with three wiggles on a board though. We haven't talked about numbers. Yeah, let's do it. Well, we don't need to. That's my point, right. is we can, but I don't, I'd rather not. Numbers are boring. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the kinds of numbers people might use if, as they're going through this learning as curve. As we're, we're going through the curve. So as we're in a world that that surface works. So maybe for your application, it's just a random surface and that's all we care about. Well, that's where a parameter like an RA or maybe an RZ is fine. We can describe that just, just fine. It's one set of wiggles, and if you've got one set of wiggles, one number is pretty much all you need. You know, in statistics, if I have a set of wiggles, I would have maybe a normal distribution of those heights. Okay. And in statistics, all we would use is standard deviation, one number. Right? We've makes, got yep, makes perfect sense. one number describes that shape. Yep. Well, as we start to plateau this surface, it's no longer one shape. So here's where we might start to look at a material ratio curve. I'm going to slice this dude at various depths. And as I go, I'm encountering more and more material. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting out at the highest peak with zero material. And I'm going to slice and work my way down until I get to 100% material. And so that's the material ratio curve. As I work my way down, what was just one little percent of material turns into slicing 100% metal as I slice. Mm -hmm. We can use that curve maybe to describe a surface that isn't just one shape, but a few shapes. There's a zone here that kind of relates to the running surface in the middle. This zone in the middle, let me change colors and see what happens here. This zone in the middle is where things are going to live. Okay. We've got a few peaks sticking out of the top that are going to wear away and some valleys underneath that are going to maybe hold some lubrication. Yep. Well, this is the RK family. We're going to have Instead of one number, we can have RK for the running surface, maybe some RPK, height, roughness of the peaks in the K family, roughness in the K family, and then roughness of the valleys in the K family. Yep. So we can 
break this surface kind of into three zones, a break-in zone, a running zone, and an oil zone. The interesting thing here is we get to the extreme surfaces, we really don't have three things. We've got peaks and valleys. Boom. That's it. We made a rough surface and then we put a fine surface on top of it. Okay. So in this world, maybe we should look at a different model that is based on some peaks that have a distribution and some original valleys that might have had a different bell curve along the way. And we combine those two where we have valleys. Throw your markers around, Keith. Hey, that's okay. And we have a, a curve that represents something like material ratio in a different space. And this is the Q family, our PQ, our VQ, and then our MQ. And you can check this out at digitalmetrology.com and learn more. But what I want to say is, as our shapes change, the way we describe them should change. Absolutely. You can't use the same form of measurement as we're changing the design. Yeah, what we're measuring. Right, the numbers that we're going to be interested in. Yeah. Um, the weird thing is, as you move from here to here, your RAs may be exactly the same. You won't know you did it. So if somebody is asking for this middle surface with RA, and their supplier is providing that surface. 